Hey, hey, it's W5HRO. Well, look what I got here. The infamous Heath Kit Novice Series. The DX60B transmitter, uh, the HF10B, I mean VFO, and the uh, HR10, yeah, the HR10B receiver. Look what I got here. I got the whole set. <laughs> and this, uh, this uh, uh, 10B, it, uh, it's supposed to look like brand new. It does. The chassis is all shiny. The transformer looks like brand new black paints on it. It's original owner. I guess they used it for a short time, put it back in the original box and uh, got rid of it. So then I found the matching uh, a VFO and the uh, uh, matching receiver. Years ago, I'll tell you the story. I think I told you how I got into ham radio maybe once upon a time. Uh, my next door neighbor back in the late 60s was a ham. This is like around 67, 68. And he gave me an old Allied Knight, uh, I'm sorry, Allied Knight re tube receiver. And uh, he gave me uh, my, my novice test. That's back when if you had a ham license, you could give a, a person their novice test, get them into it, right? So that's what he did. Then about a year, year and a half, two years later, we moved away because my mom and dad were just renting that house. And they finally decided, you know, they decided they wanted to buy a better house and a neighborhood about two blocks over this was the new addition of the area so they did that and they purchased the house got a mortgage you know the same old routine everybody else goes through most people go through anyway but uh i went there and uh, i had you know my novice license and i had uh, i gotta stand up my feet are killing me but i had my novice license and i had you know that uh that receiver and my parents knew that I wanted to get into a tr talking, something that would transmit. So they bought me a pair of really high dollar Channel 14 walkie talkies for Christmas. These were, you know, these were a high dollar pair. They couldn't, they couldn't afford to buy me like a radio set back then that would transmit. So they just got me a pair of walkie talkies thinking that would get me on there trying to talk to people. Yeah. Who am I going to talk to? It's Channel 14, just a few hundred milliwatts was like a hundred milliwatts or something. But I got on there and I was just calling and calling that Christmas day. And I, after a while, somebody uh, came back and they said, hey, who are you? I went, okay. I said, oh, yeah, I'm so-and-so. Who are you? And he goes, Santa Claus. And he came back and made like two other kind of, you know, funny comments and he disappeared. You know, he thought, oh, yeah, this is just some kid on pair of walkie-talkies he got for Christmas. No biggie. And he went about his way, which is exactly what I was. But it was more to it than that, that I had more of an interest than he realized. So every day I'd come home from school and stuff, and I kept calling him, and I kept calling him. I said, hey, Santa Claus, the guy, I said, I know you're not Santa Claus. Because by then, anyway, I knew that there was no such thing as Santa Claus. So I was, you know, calling him and calling him. And one day he finally came back. I was just saying, I'm trying to get into radio. I think the one day I said the right things and he came back, he says, you're doing what? I said, yeah, I have my novice and I'm trying to get in the, in the ham radio. My neighbor, I loved all the stuff that he had. And he started talking to me. He says, well, you know what? I'll tell you where I live. I'm like about three blocks over just uh you know, ride your bike over here and I've got some radio stuff I'll give you so you can get started. So I did that one day and you know what he gave me? He gave me a DX60 and the uh, HR uh, 10B receiver. And, uh, you know, I found that multiplexing amp at a garage sale a few months before and I realized if what I could do if I, you know, if I hooked it all up and, you know, hey, it was, I, what happened is we moved, my dad's company was uh, relocated to Tulsa, Oklahoma, like in 74, 1974. And uh, I, I brought that DX60 and the receiver with me. And I had uh, uh, the, uh, I'd gone by that garage sale. I kind of probably got ahead of myself. I went by a garage sale a few months before and I found this really nice looking high dollar old, you know, tube type. It said multi, stereo multiplexing amplifier. And when I turned around, I looked at the back of it because I bought it and I took it home. When I turned around, I looked at the back of it. Uh, it had these inputs for different impedances, but like right and left channel. And But when I looked above above on the chassis on the back there, it had a whole row of what looked like transformers. So then I took the bottom off. I slid out of the cab and I took the bottom off and I looked and I saw that the wires coming from the transformers were going to those tr input terminals on the back of the chassis. For the different impedances, I went, oh, okay, cool. So I ran the one HR10B receiver out 
into that and had one of those big 15 inch Radio Shack speakers. Remember those? Radio Shack sold those big 15 inch speakers. Used to be in the cardboard box with the plastic wrap around them or the cellophane, whatever you call it, not cellophane, but the, uh, you know, they were like professionally shrink wrapped, you know. And they had all different sizes, but I had the one of 15 inches. So I went to this place called Derrick Electronics in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, that I found that was nearby. There was like 75, I think, when I went in there. And he had some, some Heath kit stuff. He had a DX60 and an HR10 receiver. And so I bought the receiver because I realized I've got that multiplex in him. What's going to happen if I take this other receiver, if I buy it, and I run it into the back of that amp, then I have both of them, of them going in at once. What's going to happen? So I bought another one of those 15 inch speakers and I realized how good it would sound if I had one side going in the multi, you know, one and thing and one side going in the other. And what was happening was it was a multiplexing amplifier, which meant it took the right and left channels and it would mix them together to make them come out the speakers, you know, at the same time is what it would do if you, if you set it up right. And that's how cool it was. So then one day I was playing around and I figured out if I, uh, if I was to switch the, uh, and what happened was the one of the plugs I was using to connect to the back of the receiver, the plug terminal I was using messed up. So I actually took the, the and I took the end of it off and I strip, restripped the wires back and everything. And I must have got them flipped around the wrong way because all of a sudden the sound coming out with both receivers going to that amp sounded great coming through those two big 15 inch speakers. What I had was, there was a handy, there was a hardware store called Handy Dan's in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in those days. This was like a, the original little, little, you know, it was like the pre-Builder Square Home Depot type of store, you know, is what it was. Then the Builder Square came after and they got shut out when Home Depot and Lowe's hit the scene and built places across the street from them or next door to them, you know. But, uh. I bought this little four foot workbench kit, which is what I had in my bedroom, which is where I had the uh, the DX60. Didn't have the VFO, like I said, I had crystals. And then I had two of these receivers side by side. Well, I had the transmitter in the middle. I had one receiver on one side and one on the other. So I had it on that bench. Going into that tube, multiplex and amp driving those two speakers. But I, what I realized was when I'd swapped the wires around, at the time I didn't realize what I'd done. But now when I think about it, now that I know what I know, you know, I have now for since I can't remember how long ago it's been, it's been forever, but you know, that uh, when the one receiver was going, it was, you know, the when the positive peak was coming out of one, you know, when it, the, uh, on the other side, it was putting out the negative peak because I had the input on the one receiver reversed, the polarity reversed. And, you know, that's why it was making that awesome sound. I was getting, when one channel was positive, the other channel was negative. And they weren't canceling each other out because it wasn't the same thing. And it sounded awesome. So then I realized if I took the one receiver on the left, the tuning, and tuned just slightly off the station on one side to the left, and took the other receiver that was on the right and turned it just a little bit to the right off the station, I'd get this even better fidelity sound. It was awesome. I mean, I can remember when the days of doing that, and I still wish I had that multiplexing out. So that's kind of why I had a I have a love for this old uh, novice setup because I actually had one of these. I just never had the VFO. You know, I wasn't lucky enough to get that. But uh, these receivers are most hands say those are a piece of junk. <laughs> hey, but to a kid when you're trying to get into something, this was the this was like the holy grail. You see it in the catalog. I gotta have one. Well, I got my story is I I had a set given to me, and then I found that other other receiver. And then it done a little thing slipped. I let my license expire for a number of years and I had to go retest again and everything, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, I'm not going to make a long story even longer. I should have kept it short. It's been what, almost a little past nine minutes on this video. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, my plan is to do the uh, proper screen modulation to this transmitter and make the carrier solid, you know, eliminate the controlled carrier part of it, you know, and uh, which shifts the carrier around, which you don't want. You want it stable, so I'm going to do that fix and get it to where it's going to do the positive modulation, and I'll beef up some more things on it, and 
Same way I'll go through the receiver and see what I can do to improve it better from stock. From what I've heard, these things, a lot of the capacitors start leaking. They start getting really kind of weak on like 10 meters or 20 meters on up. And you got to replace the caps. That's what happens. And you could also probably, I might build a, there's also an external preamp I could use for this. But who knows? I mean, I, I, I'll probably make it work as good as I can. This is my plan. Is I'm going to make this my uh, garage station, and I'm going to run the DX60 after I modify it, and uh, run it into the uh, uh, the Yaesu FL1B, that new Mint uh, receipt, uh, the amplifier that I found, that linear that I have covered up in the garage. So I'm going to do that. That's going to be. So I should get maybe at least at least 150 watts carrier out, maybe, hopefully, maybe a little more. I can play around with this in the garage. I can listen while I'm out there working on stuff. So that'll be fun. So here's about 10 and a half minutes. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm sorry to get long-winded, but this is kind of the preview video on the Heath Kit Novice Station Series from 67 to uh, 19... Uh, 76 and the, like I said the original the original Heath kit the uh, the uh, DX60 itself the plain 60 came out in 1962 and the meter had that green thick bezel like the Apache and Mohawk that the uh, TX1 and RX1 receiver had so uh you know that's that 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 that's the first one that came out then they later changed the meter and this was the last type of meter they used on these 73 as it says W5HRO